Hey guys, it's Ronaldo Offerman again, and this time I'm going to talk to you guys about the Spherion Tri LED. You can notice it looks a lot like the WH LED, which I reviewed, but there's quite a few differences. So now that you've seen what it looks like overall, again, you'll notice that it is a resemblance of the old school disco ball type light, except this is the LED version. Let's go ahead and look at some of the features. So first glance, of course, again, this is the ADJA Spherion Tri LED. Over here, of course, you're gonna see the little switches menu because, dun 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 dun, this is a DMX fixture there. You'll see your DMX output, DMX input, your IEC. Uh, this is uh, the remote control. This is not audio in. Please do not get those confused. And of course, your microphone for sound active. One of the things that I really liked about this light is that you actually have three ways of controlling it. The first way is, you know, DMX, which for school dances, <laughs> duh. You do have the remote control. It's perfect if you're doing maybe just a two totem setup, nothing too extravagant, and this is gonna be your only moving type light besides your floods. When you're doing school dances, again, you definitely wanna do a flood light effect. Uh, but for your centerpiece effect, you could use this with the remote control. But the third way is by hand. Now, I normally would not recommend ever doing anything by hand, but hey, you know what? If it's computer control, sometimes it'll fail. Maybe the remote one day craps out on you. Maybe DMX just decides to not be your friend that day. Luckily, you can still control everything from here. There's a lot of different options, and we'll go over some of the stuff. For example, you have your addressing. But the thing that I want to talk to you guys about is programming. Now, I'm gonna hit the program button, and the first thing is this colo, which is color. So, of course, you can kind of see some of the dots in the background there. But let's look at some of the colors you can choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And it's all the different colors. Let's go to start at zero one. Okay, so we have red, we have green, we have blue, which I'm sorry looks purple on the camera. We have a combination of red and green. So yellow is what it looks like over here. Purple, combination of red and blue. And then of course, combination of blue and green, which gives you an aquamarine or teal. Uh, again, the color for blue does not show very well on this camera for some reason. Uh, then you have all three, which makes a nice white. So again, keep in mind, this is like the tri-face, where it doesn't do color mixing LEDs, but it actually has the color side by side, as you can see there. You also have your rotation. Now you'll notice that as I change the value, it goes a little faster. It goes pretty fast. So actually, let's go back over here. This looks almost blazing fast, almost uncomfortable. But keep in mind that the bigger the room is, the slower the rotation seems. So for example, a gymnasium, this is a good speed that you want to focus on. I want you real quick to look over here at the beams. I'm gonna slow them down quite a bit. Okay. Just like a disco ball and just like its cousin, the WH LED, they are not all the same size. These are all different size LEDs. Or beams, excuse me. Haha. <laughs> you get the point. So now we have the nice little purple color rotating slowly. Oh, here's something neat. It also goes the other direction. Let's talk about DMX programming real quick while we're looking at this. You have two different options. You can individually program all your values. Let's get my cat down, shall we? <laughs> so let's talk about DMX because this is one of the coolest things about this. You can program this two different ways. You can A, program each individual thing. Just as I showed you, I can control speed, the rotation, the direction, or the color, you can do several of that, which I'm gonna show you a little bit more later on during the actual school dance. Or, you can just program the actual shows. This thing has several built-in shows. And when you look at the manual, it'll tell you exactly what each channel does, but there, you can do a one channel or you know multiple channel uh, DMX, so you can program each individual thing, or just use the DMX to use the built-in shows, which is pretty wicked, 
because my school dance that I'm using this for is Saturday. I haven't had a chance to program any shows for this yet, so I'm gonna use the pre-built shows this Saturday. So you're gonna be able to check them out in just a couple of minutes. So you got a few different options. Let's go over them real quick. You have your address setting. This is for DMX. You have your reset, which is pretty obvious. Your software version. Your fixture hours. Self-test. Display, if you're gonna hang it upside down, you may want to invert the display. Uh, LED to turn it on or off there, the back display. The blackout mode. Sound sensitivity, very important when you're doing the, uh, without remote control or DMX, control your sound sensitivity from here. Program, we already discussed this. Uh, your show modes. So, oops, hold on a second. There we go. Show modes. So I'm gonna leave the lights on for just a second, but you'll actually see there that it's already got some pretty built-in cool stuff. A lot of strobing, which is actually pretty neat, I think. Boom, boom. So it kind of goes there to the beat there. you have your master and slave. Now, one of the really nice things that I saw about this, actually I'm gonna say it's downward ingenious because it makes things so much easier. If you are using this with the remotes, usually if you link them up together, you're gonna have them doing the exact same thing. However, let's go over here. You have your master, slave one, and then dun dun dun, slave two. What is a slave two, you ask? is the exact same thing as Slave 1, meaning it's linked to the first light, but everything is inverted. So it's gonna do it in contrast to the first light. So that's gonna be quite a bit of fun. If you have two of these on totems, one turns to the right, then one's going to the left. It makes a much neater show. And when you put something like that with haze, and you have the beams crisscrossing like that, oh, I'm telling you, it's killer. So again, this is the one channel and the three channel. Well, if you're doing three channel, that means you have three DMX channels. Channel 1 would be, for example, you know, your channel 1 is going to be your stop. Clockwise rotation, fast or slow. Stop. Clockwise rotation, fast or slow, or fast or slow. So basically what you saw when we were doing the rotation. Uh, channel 2 would be your dimming and strobe. Just like a parkan, how you can dim it up and down, and the very top channel, bottom channel may be strobing. This is how it works. And then channel 3 is your color. Very easy to program. But again, this weekend I don't have time to program this light, so I'm going to put it into a one channel fixture. Now the last few shows that I've done where I had some sort of disco ball centerpiece light, I have used my disco ball with the Nova scans or some sort of scanner aimed at them. Now there's a couple advantages of doing the old school method. And those advantages would be that I can control the lights a little bit better. As far as you know, I have like multiple color mixing and all of that, but I'm limited to what my Nova scans can do. Or I can have one side be one color, one side be the other color. Or is my crowd really going to notice that? <laughs> Not really. This one has a lot more advantages than doing the old school method. One of the advantages, as you saw, is that this thing can go a lot faster or a lot slower. I've yet to see a really good disco ball DMX motor and I don't really want to go through all that effort to hang something like that. So this is easy because I can make it go fast, I can make it go slow, but I can also now use my scanners to be scanners. I don't have to kill an entire show just because I want to use my disco ball effect. So I can have my scanner slowly sweeping around the audience and have this in the middle. So now I can create a whole different atmosphere of effects. The nicest part is, look at this thing. This is super light. It is one hand light. Okay, and it's going crazy because I have it on sound active right now. It's so easy to lift up and rig just like the WHLED. It has a special little uh, clamp that you can just install here to hang it upside down. And you bet I'll be using that. Or you can put it right side up like this. My absolute favorite part of this, more than anything else, is the full DMX control and how bright this is. I mean, look at this. The lights are still on, okay? And I wanna point out that my fluorescents are on and I have lights in my bedroom behind me and in the living room, which is all connected to the kitchen. And you can see them nice and bright. So this is it. It is the American DJ 
Spherion Tri LED. It is a must have fixture for any type of school dance, for weddings. Oh, this is going to bring such a classic effect back to weddings. So, again, the American DJ, Spherion Tri LED. My name's Arnaldo Offerman, and you just rock this slide with me.